All right, thanks, Peter. Uh, do you ever wonder what's really on the mind of your minister, your priest, or rabbi? A yes. recent Reader's Digest article divulges their confessions, such as, am I always 100% sure that God exists? No. Every minister I know has a faith life that ebbs and flows. Sometimes we feel really close to God, and sometimes we don't. Well, Fox News religion contributor Father Jonathan Morris joins us now with Good some morning. revelations of his own. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. So is that true? Do, do a lot of spiritual leaders actually doubt the existence of God from time to time? Definitely. And in fact, I remember uh, Pope Benedict, not many people quote him these days, but he said what, uh, what unites us in humanity, both believers and non-believers, is our doubt. Isn't that interesting? As human beings, we never will have perfect faith, and we have a limited intellect. We can't grasp everything. So certainly I have moments of doubt. I can't say I'm doubting the existence of God, but I doubt sometimes, gosh, what is it going to look like? What's, have, what's heaven going to look like? I'm not exactly sure how this is all going to work out, things like that. A lot of people doubt the conduct of God. They say, mm. I believe in a, in a wonderful, beautiful God. Why has God done this to me and my family? whether it's an untimely death or it's an illness or it's some financial misfortune. Do you see that with people? Oh, I, I do all the time. I, I wrote a whole book about it some years back called The Promise. And it's, it's dealing with how, do, first of all, most of our suffering is self-inflicted, right? Most of, the, most of the suffering in my life are bad decisions that I've made or bad decisions that other people have made that have an effect on yes. my life. That's free will. But yes, there, Peter, no doubt that there are some things you just say, this child, innocent child dying at such a young age, et cetera, that's hard, and I don't grasp it 100%. So you are a representative of the church. You're also a symbol of the church and a very visible one because you wear the collar. You say that if you're in traffic and you cut somebody off, this poses a problem. Well, you guys asked me to basically make a confession to you. <laughs> oh, yes. Of course, I would be happy to do that over Nobody's a dinner, but now I'm doing it in front us. of you know, a TV audience. What I said in that one, I think I gave five here, is sometimes I'm driving down the street and accidentally I might cut somebody off, or maybe not so accidentally, try to it's get ahead York. of somebody. Yeah. And instinctively I go like this. I cover my collar because I don't want, it, it's one thing for people to be mad at me, but I don't want them to be mad at God as well or at the church. And so, yes. And so when people have driven with me and I go like this, as I'm cutting somebody off, people laugh. And one of your other duties is that you will marry couples from time to time, but you have one flub that was Oh, one of, one of the other confessions, I guess, was uh, I do a lot of weddings and I love doing weddings. But, um, you know, at the end of, of the wedding, you have to say, uh, I now introduce you as man and wife. And I said, I said, Brian, you may now kiss the bride. And it turns out it wasn't Brian. In fact, Brian was an old boyfriend that I knew very well, old boyfriend oh. of the bride. And the whole family knew Brian as well. So <laughs> I, 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 I've, learned from, I've learned from my mistakes. When, when you're at the pulpit, when you're giving your homily, when you're talking about the word of God, the Sunday gospel, what are you thinking sometimes? What do you think you know, I other think than, of, than how is this, the how message? How is this being received? It's very easy to say, this is what I believe. Another thing is, how is this received? What I do with my homilies, whenever I can, I pass it by a very good friend of mine who's an atheist. And I say, I'm going to say this. What do you think? And of course, he's not going to say, oh, well, you know, I believe 100 percent. But he says, that makes sense to me. Or, you know what, that doesn't make sense to me. And I find that it's very important to see how is this being received, not just what do I have to say. So, so do you ever hear confessions that shock you? Um, no. As your attorney, he can't discuss his confessions. <laughs> no, actually, actually I, I, really? can say, I can say there's never been one that I've said, oh, my gosh, I'm scandalized or surprised. It's always just the opposite. It's like unbelievable humility and courage of this person to start again. And I have to do that in my own life. And, as, and as a believer, it, it helps me that you confess to self-doubt because, because the fact that you stay with it gives me confidence. And so thank you for sharing that with us. No problem. Today. You know, I did, I did choose some pretty easy ones. Okay. I mean, there'd be some other things I could share, but um, we'll just do that off air. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe, maybe next week. Well, I'll John put them on my, uh, on my Facebook and Twitter right after that, the real confession. How's that? Thank you, Father. <laughs>